everybody Pedro here Pedro's grow room uh, you guys have all been asking for a sips video a how-to video so I went down to the store today got a bunch of, of uh, equipment and some soil and some amendments and stuff and we're gonna show you exactly how I go about making my sips containers um, so forgive me right now if it's if I'm trying to talk louder I'm outside so it's a little bit tougher to get the audio on the camera um, I don't have a microphone on me and the airport's been taken off today a little bit, so you might hear some airplanes in the background, but I'll try to do as best as I can. So anyways, here is one of the uh, SIPS containers. This is the one that I particularly use right now. I'm uh, switching to a different SIPS container that's a little bit more rectangular in shape, and you'll see that in a future video, but this works great as well. This is what I'm currently using in flower. I'm currently using some uh, that had just flipped from veg over to flower, and it's a ridiculously good product to use. So this happens to be the root and veg. Um, by the way, all of the products that I'm using today, 100% is from Build-A-Soil. I mean, everything that you see here in front of me is from Build-A-Soil. And I, I will put a link up um, to the Build-A-Soil page. And I will also put a link up for every single product here that I'm using so that if you want to follow this path to a T, um, it's extremely simple once you get it set up. It's extremely simple to set up. But if you want to follow it to a T, you can walk down this same path and, and have ridiculously good results. So anyways, when you unbox this, the first thing that you're going to do is pull it open, you're going to see that it's got a, a little pouch here. These, these are the shower caps, I call them, for the top of the for the top of the SIPS container. I'm going to put these aside for right now. I've already got one picked out that I'm going to use, uh, so I'll get back to that a little bit later. You'll also make sure that you pick up some wheels for your SIPS container. You definitely want to have wheels for your SIPS um, container. When you get the water in there and all the soil and you get your plant on top, um, it becomes a little cumbersome to move around your grow room. Uh, there is a, a drain here, a drain hole here on the side that you uh, got to pay attention to so sometimes moving around just a little bit in your grow room is nice so make sure you have the wheels so that you can make sure that you can see your drain hole and you have, have a little bit act a little bit better access to your plants and um, it just makes things a little bit easier so I'm gonna set those aside for right now in here you'll also get the, the little separation platform that goes down on the bottom there's my shower cap actually so you get some shower caps from there and the first thing I do is take these nutrients that they give you and put them aside. These are all just nutrients that I give to my girlfriend to use for her indoor plants. I don't put anything like that uh, in, in my outdoor uh, or in my, in my SIPS container. So I'll go over exactly everything that we use again. So, so here is the bottom container. This is what separates your, your water reservoir down here in the bottom from your, so your soil that sits on top of there. And what happens is we've got a fill hole you got a fill tube that'll go down in here. And when this all sets down inside here, and I'll tilt it forward so that you can see, this is going to stick out of this top of the, sh the shower cap, I call it. And then you're going to have the plant sticking out of the, sh of the shower cap as well. And in here, we're going to have our, our soil, and, and then underneath this is our water reservoir. So I'm about to get into that right about now. 
So I've got everything sitting off to the side. I think I've got everything here that I need. And uh, if I miss anything, I might have to push pause and run in and get it. But I apologize for how long this video is about to be, but we wanted an all-inclusive video, so here it is. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and put it down in here. This one happens to be square, so it's, it's perfect. You can put it in either way. You don't have to put it in. You know, it, it doesn't really matter if you want. I guess the only thing to pay attention to is your fill hole is going to be here. So if you want your fill hole to be on your visual side, I like to have my drain holes down there. Um, if I'm gonna be filling from the side that the camera's on, I want my fill hole to be here and my drain hole to be here. I don't wanna to have to fill up the back of the SIPS container and then watch that side for the overflow. So I try to make sure that they're both on the same side. Once that's down in there, you want to make sure that you put down your fill hole. This will be moved around a little bit. Um, I like to try to make sure that I keep them straight up just due to the, to the location of the hole in here that's pre-cut for that, and I'll show you that as well. But anyways, I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab, I've got uh, the Living Organic Soil from, or with Malibu compost in it from Build-A-Soil. And again, I'll put a link up there. This is uh, one of their premium, or this is their premium living soil mix. Um, so if you want the best results, this is what you're going to use. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not extremely moist. It's, um, and you can look up on the Build-A-Soil website for the exact mix that they use in here if you want to try to mim mimic this at home. So I'm going to put this down in here. This has got a little bit drier, but I'm just going to pour it down in the bottom and put a little cover on the bottom. All right now, don't worry about getting soil down in your reservoir. Um, some soil is definitely going to fall through. It's not a big deal. So when I get this soil down in the bottom here, what I want to do is in those two cups, in those two corner cups that were held, that were down in the in that original bin, I'm going to want to take and I'm going to pack that soil down in those corner cups very well. There are little depressions in the corners, and what that does is it creates the uh, it's, it creates the wicking action um, and helps promote really good wicking action through here. Because essentially what you're doing is filling up the bottom of the reservoir and all of the water is just wicking up through the soil, through the peat, mate, or through the peat soil. Well, it's living organic soil and, and it's watering the thing inside. So, so you want to make sure that that is down fairly tight in those corners. And I will take my little sprayer here. I like the sprayer because it, it gives a nice little nice little mist to it. So I'll take it out, get those corners just nice and moist, not overly wet, and I'll give just a little bit of spray here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to layer this and get everything a little moist as I go. Um, I don't want to overwater it, but I want to make sure that there's a little moisture in the container before, um, before I fill up the reservoir. That way the wicking will take place. So I'm going to put a little more in here. I don't know, three, four, five, six inches more or so. Again, I want to kind of do a do a layering system. I don't want this sitting in here tight, um, but I don't want it sitting in here really loose either. So I'll give it just a little bit of compaction. And then I'll grab my sprayer and just moisten it again, just a little bit. Like, and just enough to get you know the soil a little moist. Um, sometimes this soil tends to be a little um, hydrophobic and you could use some yucca extract for that if you'd like, but we're keeping it extremely simple here. So again, I just wet down a little bit of that layer there. I'm going to put down this next layer. And this container with how I'm doing this today should just about hold this entire bag. Uh, usually it'll, it'll hold a little bit more than one of these bags. That's why I've got another bag sitting off the side here. But I think for what I'm doing today, this will, this will probably do with one bag. Uh, tip here, kind of make sure as you're going to make sure that your fill tube is in the proper position. You don't want to lean it over because it's not going to line up with your your shower cap then and I'll show you that in a, bit, in a minute again. So I've got that next layer down and I'm going to give it a little bit of water. And I do have just um, one ounce, I have, uh, I have two gallons of water in here uh, and I've got one ounce of EM1. I'm going to put that link up on the page as well to that product, but I've got one ounce per gallon of EM1 in here as well. It's a soil inoculant. inoculant. Um, it is activated labs with molasses, um, some other beneficial bacteria, and some yeast in it as well. It's a pr pr proprietary product. Um, you can get close to, um, you mean you can make activated labs and, and then feed it with molasses and have a pretty good shelf life. And we'll get that a whole other video, but the EM1 is a pretty good product straight off the shelf to use. So, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little trick here, and I'm going to see kind of exactly where I want this plant to be. You know, I'm going to want the top of the plant 
to be pretty darn close to the top of the container. At this point in time, you can bury it a little bit if you want to, you know, stunt your plant, but I want it to be right about there. So I'm going to leave this in here. This is going to create a little depression for the rest of my soil so that when I transplant the pot in, plant in here in, in a minute, it's going to be in a nice little depression. Gorgeous day here in Colorado too. Um, I am doing this um, kind of on purposely half in the shade here. I don't like my compost, my EM1, and all my materials sitting out in the hot sun baking. I mean, this is all living organic material, so if you get it too hot, you're going to kill bacteria, you're going to kill microbes. So, as you can see, that one bag probably didn't do ex you know as much as I wanted to. So I am going to go over, grab that other bag. I think they said in the instructions that they usually will hang or usually handle about a bag and a third. Um, this is one cubic foot, this is one and a third cubic foot, cubic feet is about enough. I am going to be doing some top dressing here as well, so I do want to leave a little bit of room on top. And I'll probably just move this over by hand. Do this outside, folks, if you can, otherwise put a tarp underneath. Don't underestimate the mess that you probably will make. Hope I'm talking loud enough here for y'all. I know it's tough because I'm outside. Alright, so as you can see, I'm creating a nice little depression. Once I remove this pot out of here, it's going to have a nice little cup for me to slide this clone down in. By the way, this is a critical Kush number two pheno out of my garden. I really wish I had a number one pheno because I think I like that plant a little better, but it didn't work out that way. So this is a number two. Uh, so it's coming from outdoor to indoor and it's looking ridiculously well. I did have a little bit of thrips problem, so I, I hit it with some neem oil. Um, you, so you'll see a little bit of the damage on the leaves here from the thrips. Um, but I hit it with some neem oil and, uh, and they're doing just fine. So, all right, what's next? From there, like I said, I'm going to moisten this down just a little bit. That way that, that uh, depression there will hold a little better instead of caving in on itself. Just give a little bit of moisture here to this soil. Give her a little drink too, right? She'll get one in a second when she gets in this container. All right. So like I said, I'm going to just press it down just a little bit. Pull this out too, so, too soon. The water won't have a chance to go down in, and, and it will just cave anyway, so we'll see what happens. But Essentially, that's what you want. It's a nice little housing for your root ball. I probably could have got that just a little bit deeper. And if you need to, you can always just reach in and pull a little out. No big deal. I'm going to pull a little bit out because I want this plant just a little bit deeper than what I had it. Reach over and I'm going to grab my VAM. What this is, this is a uh, mycorrhizae um, root and soil inoculant. This is just um, going to promote the fungal growth around your root zone. Uh, and I'm not following any recipe here. I'm just going to sprinkle some down in. Every single time I do a uh, repotting, I will use some of this. So as a matter of fact, we picked up another bag today from Build a Soil. So thank you very much, Build a Soil, for providing all this. This is ridiculously nice of you, and it's going to really highlight what these SIPS containers do. And everybody's been wanting that, so this is awesome. All right, I'm not forgetting anything. I just want to make sure that I've got everything in order. I'm not forgetting anything. We've got the container filled up. We've got our mycorrhizae down there. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this girl over. I didn't even need to pop her on the bottom. She's gonna fall right out. As you can see, she's ready to be transplanted, but she is not root bound. That is extremely key. So make sure you know your plants are being repotted properly. If they do get root bound, you're just gonna see problems. I wanna get this in here right now. I don't wanna expose it too long to the air. And as you see, it's gonna slide in just like a nice little plug. Beautiful. All right, and then what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to reach over, and this is a craft blend of nutrients um, from Build a Soil, all organic. Everything here is 100% organic, by the way. That's why we're keeping it simple. So this is a craft blend. Um, you can look up on buildasoil.com, and I'll, again, I'll put the links all over uh, so that you can see exactly what this product is. It says about a half cup um, to one cup per plant. I'm going to do this is a one cup. I'm measuring cups. I'm going to do two cups to this. 
and I'm just going to cake it in here real nice. This is about, uh, I weighed this out a little bit ago, and one cup is about three quarters of a pound. So I'm just going to cake this on the top real nice. This is going to provide the plant uh, sustained nutrients through its growth cycle. Um, it's not going to break down real quick like your, your bottle nutrients will. Um, it's going to take a long time, so it's going to last through the cycle of the plant, which is extremely nice. So I'm just putting in two cups in here. You could put in three, you could put in a little more, um, but we're just going to do two cups this round, and we're going to watch how this plant explodes. So there's my two cups, the craft blend. Uh, it's got an approximate uh, NPK numbers of 342, I believe, if some of you guys are interested in that. Again, the full recipe, that's what's nice about build soil is that they provide recipes for all of their stuff. On their website, they show the research behind it, and um, and they tell you a lot about how to use their products. So not only is it a, is it a good uh, place to buy your your products from, but it's also a good place for information as well. So definitely check them out. Um, next here, what I'm going to do is my my top dress. Oops, and there goes my water. Imagine that. I always like to knock over water on camera for some reason seems to be like my trademark or coming to be my trademark for some reason. Uh, this is uh, Malibu compost. Again, I'll put a link up on this video. There's going to be links all over, but that's all right. You guys wanted the information. So this is just Malibu compost straight from build a soil And it is, I mean, it is premium, premium grade um, cow compost, essentially. So I'm going to apply this very, very liberally to the top. And I mean like mound it. This is going to be another food source. Essentially what you're creating here is, is a, a, li a living dome inside this container. Um, you're going to have your fungal on your roots that are going to be eating the sugars um, that is provided through some of the EM1 and through these nutrients, and then the uh, the living bike or the living microbes will be eating all this this uh, material as well, and releasing food in turn to the plants. And it's just a great symbiotic relationship inside the container. And like I said, once you've got it set up, it's just so ridiculously simple. You just add water. Uh, one thing to try to be careful of. Um, try not to get the compost right on the the stem. It's just not a good idea, um, just for, for potential stem rot, and um, and just too much right up against the stem. So again, here just top dressing this all the way around. Mound it up really, really tall if you want to, because we're going to put that shower cap on the top, and it's going to hold everything in. All right, so there's my top dress. From there, grow kashi. Again, look up on Build a Soil, you'll see their exact, um, the way they make it, all the ingredients and everything, they're very open about everything that they use. Um, and essentially what this is gonna do is um, just add some more bacteria, um, some more microbes into the entire mix here. And um, again, it's just gonna create a living you know, system inside here. This will spawn uh, uh, mycelia, which will in turn break down this compost on the top, which feeds the plant with their excretions as well. So, sprinkle this liberally across the top. I'm using one cup, half cup. Um, there are directions on this, guys, but uh, I've been doing this for a little while now, and I know that uh, it's kind of tough to overdo it sometimes in organic. So. Just put that on there. Now what I should have done here, and I was going to do this in the, before as well. Number one, I guess I should have put my wheels on. Lesson learned. Put your wheels on first. I'll have to have, to have my girlfriend out here snap these on in a, in a little bit. But also your shower cap. Um, what I would, wish I would have done is cut this out prior to putting it on. Um, so there is a hole already pre-cut in it. Oh, by the way, there's a black side and a white side. Um, when I do it, I use the black side up. What that does is creates a lot of humidity inside the SIPS container. 
um, allows condensation to build up on the bottom side of this, which rains down through the mycelia, which rains down through the compost, which just feeds the whole darn thing. And then it, again, it, um, it wicks the moisture up from the bottom of the container and just keeps going. So it's a, it's a huge um, soil web here. Uh, it's just ridiculously well, and that's done. Um, what I'll do in the future with this, um, as far as after, if I ever remove this in the future, I'll grab some more of my Malibu compost, put that on here, put some more of gro ah, Grokashi down, and put the top back on. That is it, that is done, 100% done through the life cycle of this plant. So what, I'll, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna imagine about the middle, right about in here. I don't know if I brought my scissors out, so we'll grab the handy knife. And what I wanna do is just kinda cut an X in there. You don't want it to be too big, you don't want it to be too small, but as you can see in this case, I've got a little bit bigger plant. So I am probably going to beat this plant up just a little bit, trying to get it through this tiny little hole. And I probably will um, elongate this hole a little bit in the process, which is no big deal. Just throw a little bit of duct tape on there and it'll be just fine. So I probably should edit this out because this is going to be a little mean to this plant, but it is what it is. This plant will, it will survive. Um, well, you'll see it's going to survive just fine. So I'm going to hold this up and start feeding these leaves and the whole plant through this hole. And like I said, yes, it is going to get beat up and it is going to be just, just fine. I'm probably going to trim a lot of this or some of this lower stuff off as well. So not super worried about it. So there's my hole for my drain or for my fill tube right here pull this back just a little bit make sure my drain tube is sticking through the plant is almost all the way through a couple more bottom branches here actually didn't do too bad of a job beating this one up this time it's amazing how what these plants will fit through and what they'll they'll bounce back to do so there you go that's the sips container set up now for the watering for daily maintenance for daily watering um, extremely simple water you can use uh, tap water if you want make sure if you're using tap water that you let, let it sit for at least 12 hours I recommend 18 to 24 that'll get rid of, rid of any of the chlorine in the water if you do have any of the chlorine uh, still left over in your water it's going to kill your your soil it's going to kill all the bacteria in your soil so, so definitely be careful of that so I've got one gallon of water this is just uh, um, essentially ir well, this is irrigation water this is essentially mountain runoff water uh, mount runs off the mountains down into lakes um, and then it gets pumped down to us so it's got a, a lot of extra stuff in it as well but I don't worry about pH testers don't worry about that stuff everything is going to balance itself out inside this container so one ounce of this EM1 again activated labs and molasses um, is the is the base for it but there is also proprietary yeast and bacteria in this as well so very good product um, there's also they actually provide information on how you can um, multiply this so I mean yeah they want you to use great products but they also want you to learn on how to become a better grower yourself in the future so you can actually multiply the products that they give you anyways one ounce per gallon of water eyeball not a big deal that's going to keep this is uh, an uh, uh, it's an anaerobic bacteria, so I'm not going to put any stones down in here because any stones is going to is going to kill. It's going to make it an aerated um, container, which is going to kill the bacteria. I need it to be anaerobic. So um, keeping the EM1 in there will also cut down on any odor. If you have problems with odor in the future, you can add more EM1 if you need to. You know, if you had, need to add two or three ounces to kill any odor, just to get everything back to back to neutral, you can. But um, all I'm going to do is pour one gallon into this. I think it takes a gallon and a half. I have to get another gallon over here if I need to. But it's as simple as this, guys. Put water in the fill hole. You look down every day in the morning when your lights come on, whatever your morning is. You look down in the hole. If it needs water, you put water in it. Some people like to let it go bone dry. Some people like to keep water in it all the time. Um, as long as you watch your container, it's not a big deal. And the EM1 is going to watch your container for you. Watch your container for you. So, so there's one gallon. And as a matter of fact, I am going to put this other gallon in here because I want to show you this overfill tube. So again, just going to go back, grab my EM1, one, or one ounce per gallon. And that's it, guys. That is all the maintenance I'll do on this. Um, maybe once or twice in the life cycle of this plant, I will throw 
you know, I'll pop the, the container back over, put some compost in there again, and some grokashi, but maybe twice throughout the whole process. Uh, so anyways, I'm just going to show you what happens when this overflows. It's kind of foolproof. What I usually do is just grab a uh, washcloth and put it underneath the container so that it catches this. Uh, you can get a lot of different containers that's going to catch the water, the overflow. So just put the water in. I think they say these hold about a gallon and a half, so it should be right about now starting to overflow pretty soon. There it comes out. So when you start seeing the overflow, you're done. Now what that's gonna do, again, there's those pockets of soil down there that is sitting in the water, that is starting its wicking action already, and it's gonna start creating humidity inside this black container. I am gonna get this out of the sun. I don't want it to cook. This plant has not seen the sun, except for you know what I got have going on right now. So uh, I wanna get it out of the sun just so it doesn't uh, shock it too much. This is an indoor plant. But anyways, so on, um, that's done. It's, it's gonna it's gonna create a, a very humid environment inside. Um, and then all you have to do is just keep adding water and EM1 to this and it's going to grow ridiculously well. I'll keep doing updates on this. I'm going to literally throw this plant as it is into the flower tent. Um, it's a maybe a little bit small for that, but if I know if I throw this into my veg tent, it's just going to go, go wild. So I want to give it the proper light. I'm going to throw it right into the flower tent this evening when my lights come on and we're going to watch this thing grow. So I think I've included everything. Again, big, big shout out to you over there, Builder Soil. You guys are amazing. Jeremy, you're awesome. I love you over there, brother. Um, so they provide, like I said, great information um, and, uh, and great products. So definitely check them out. All of the products here were from there uh, if, down to the water sprayer. So uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Definitely like, definitely subscribe. And as always, from Pedro's Grow Room, peace.